Given a matrix mat, if any element within a matrix is zero, set that row and column to zero. So we have this matrix, if anything is zero, set its row and column to zero. That's why we have this here. Same here, set its row and column to zero. Now we have that. And the same pattern over here. And now for the solution to this problem, um, we can use this test matrix. And we're going to need to initialize some things. So we need to keep track of the number of rows, the number of columns. And the first row, whether there's a zero in the first row, whether there's a zero in the first column. If there's a zero here, we flip this to true. If there is a zero in the first column, we flip this to true. Otherwise, we keep it as false. If there's a zero in the first row, we flip it to true. Otherwise, we keep it as false. In this case, we are flipping F row to true because there was a zero in there. While F column stays the same, stays false. In the code, um, we get these values, right? We get the dimensions, the row which is the outer one, the length, the column, the first, take the first slice, get it, get its length. And next we're gonna uh, initialize this uh, first. This basically says, is there a zero in the first column? Is there a zero in the first row? And then this is how we check that. So we check the one for the columns by looping through the rows, indexing as like this, and this, this pattern is worth internalizing or try, trying out in person if you are coding live. And if there is, we set it to, uh, to true if there's a zero. And it, for the row, we do it for the columns with this pattern over here. And we are setting it to true depending on whether we see a zero or not. Up next, we move on to this inner grid, this subgrid for zero, four, zero, three, two, four. And whenever we see a zero there, we set the first value in the, its row and column to zero. So you notice there was five on one here, because there's a zero here, we're gonna change five to zero and change one to zero, as you can see. And we're gonna do that um, for everything on evaluate rule wise. So four, we don't do anything, right? Zero, oh, we're gonna set the first column to zero. So it was already zero, so nothing changed. And this was already zero because we did it here, so nothing changed. And that's what we're gonna do, okay? And then we come here and do the same thing, three, two, four, because there was none of those at zero, nothing happens. And that is represented in this block of code over here. So we're looping through for, for starting from one this time for the rows and columns. And if we see a zero at the current position where we're, we're, we're looking at, we set its first row and first column to zero, the values there to zero. Okay, so that's what this does all that. Now, finally, 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 we're done looping through that. And so, we check the first element of the second row is zero. So we set, so the first element of the second row is zero. So we set these rows to zero, set everything to zero. The first element of the third row is not zero, don't do anything. The first element of the second column is zero, set the complete columns to zero. So now we're going first by rows and then by columns, right? And this is zero, so set everything to zero. And then we're done. We've done everything. Oh, I mean, lastly, I mean, we check F row and F column, right? So if it's true, then F row is true, just set everything to zero. But as you, so it, it zeroes out these three and two that's left. And then if F column was true, we would have done the same thing. But it wasn't. So we have this at the end of the day. And then what does that look like in code? And so, we're checking every row's first element starting from that we zeroed out prior, right? Starting from the second row. And we set the complete row to zero if, if zero is found. So this is how you set the complete row to zero if a zero is found. And then same thing for the column. Starting from the second column, set the complete row to zero if zero is found. So it's like following a recipe essentially. Uh, this is how to do it in place, the most efficient way to do this problem in place. Um, there are other ways to do it, right? Naive ways to do it, but it will probably involve copying or overwriting things. Um, but this is how to get it done, like uh, memory memory efficiently. So we're checking every column's first element, uh, starting from the second column, right? setting the complete column zero if a zero is found. So if we remember, we set the zeros earlier, right? Um, in here. And then the reason we're using F rule, like a Boolean here, is so that we don't overwrite future things that we've not seen yet, right? Um, 
that would be like the, the, that wouldn't be well that wouldn't get us where we want to go and so when we're done it for the columns lastly we come and check f column right if it was true then we can now set the whole thing to zero right if rule was true then we can now set the whole thing to zero because we've not overwritten stuff that we might have seen down the line um so yeah that is that return a matrix safe any let's look at the time complexity um i think they mentioned that here right uh if you find zero and swap it in yes true if you find We will not set the entire first row to zero. I can make the following rows in column zero. So it can make the following rows in column zero. So now we check all elements rule wise. Okay. So you can override things that we don't want to be overwritten before time. So that's why we um, don't set it to zero initially. We just keep track. Oh, we saw a zero here. Okay. All right. Let's go to time complexity. Um, Da, 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 solution summary n by n kind of expected and space complexity is one because we don't use any extra memory and that's all there is to this problem ciao like comment subscribe